Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with some more Legion Imperialis content. Um, on today's video, I'm going to be painting up, and I'm sorry, I tried to remember it, but it is honestly so many words. The Civitas Imperialis City Road Tiles Set. So Games Workshop very kindly sent me out one of these box sets to um, to test out and review for you guys in a video. So that's what I'm going to do here today. Um, I've gotten obviously one of the packs which contains six tiles and I'm going to be painting hopefully them all up in today's video using some very quick, simple and effective methods. Obviously I need to get my hands on three more box sets to have a full Legion Imperialis table and hopefully I can do that sometime in the new. Uh, before I get into the video I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys I could not keep the lights on the cameras rolling. It really does mean the world to me especially around this time of year and I'm also trying to hit 40,000 subscribers by the end of the year so if you want to help me out with that hit that subscribe button and get involved. Without further ado I'm going to go ahead and spray these tiles and then get started with the painting. Okay so this is the board tile that I'm going to be using for today's demonstration. A nice T-junction and the thing I'm going to be using to paint it as a, a, opposed to a brush is a sponge. So I'm going to start with the kind of concrete or marble effect parts of it not the road so everything but the road. I'm going to start with Zandri dust and I'm going to use a sponge where I've torn off a bit of it and I'm going to use this with some dabbing motions to apply the paint. Now this is not going to look very good until we start building up the layers. So the first coat of the Zandri dust even frustrated me putting it on but I stuck with it and I did really like the result at the end. So I know I say this a lot but just trust the process. Just wait till the end and then you can decide whether or not the style that I did to paint these boards is good or not. A couple of key features about these boards which kind of irked me a little bit when they came out. Uh, they almost turned me off them and I'm still not sure whether I would actually buy into more of them. So I guess the biggest concern for me would have been of course the price. They are 90 euro for a set of six and unfortunately you need to buy four boxes of these things in order to have a gaming table. So 9, 18, 27, 30, 360 euro for a gaming table and just the flat parts before you start buying buildings or anything like that, which is very, very expensive for something like this. And I think one of the reasons why that price irks me, because usually I'm not one that get held up on price. You can charge whatever they want. That's totally fine. Their products, their business, their decision. But most games are played on a five by four foot gaming table. That is the size of the standard generic epic gaming table which means when you buy your four packs, you have four tiles left over. So you have to buy four extra tiles for no use. They, unless you want to bump it up to a six by four table at some point for some slightly larger games. But when I looked through the rule book, the majority of the missions played is a five by four table. So that was a bit bizarre. An interesting choice on their part, I think. But who am I to, to judge? Another weird thing I found was on the launch of this thing, like I said, you need four to have a gaming table. Now, the smart thing to do is get three friends together, of course, each of you buy three, and then go thirds in on the last box set and take two tiles a piece. That's what I'm gonna try and do for me if I decide to go all in and get the rest of these tiles. On the launch day, they had them limited to two per person. So you could spend 180 euro and get half a gaming table. <laughs> they wouldn't let you buy any more for a couple of weeks, which is another bizarre choice that they made. But that's rant over. Like I said, it's a bizarre choice. It's a lot of money for some flat plastic do think a lot of independent stores are going to come out and give us some beautiful neoprene mats with cityscapes designed into them and stuff like that and they're going to be 40 euro so <laughs> it's a hard sell for me the second color that i used on all of the concrete parts was screaming skull a nice kind of bone color you see the difference between the bottom left and bottom right as goes and you can see the sponging technique definitely does work like i said you got to build up those layers to make it work and i see a huge jump in color here and i think the one on the right looks fantastic even though we're not even done here's the entire tile done with the screaming skull and it already looks really nice i'm loving the effect that you're getting with sponges now one thing i will say the, the dish sponge that i used for this which was brand new was quite rough quite hard i would have probably preferred something a little softer so i'm thinking if you can get your hands on or if you're going out to buy supplies to do this yourselves i think the best choice would be um car wash sponges you know those big yellow really soft ones i think you'll get a really really good effect with that there's another little extra two cents from you i'm gonna have to pick some up myself and do some testing with it but i think that's the best um, sponge to go with. plus they're not that expensive and they're quite large so you can tear chunks off them all day for this i pretty much used up an entire sponge to do this project 
Wraith Bone was used then for the final highlight. As you can see, I'm going quite light on this. Just basically adding a few flecks of brighter color as a kind of like a highlight color to this. And this is exactly the same technique that I use to paint the bases on my actual Legion Imperialis miniatures. So that I play on my gaming table, these are gonna match in. Now I'm obviously gonna do a different color for the roads. I make it match in with the, almost like the box set to be honest. So it's just a little bit more um, down and dirty, a little bit more rough. Like I said, these are, uh, this is a city that's under siege from heresy legion era armies. Like these are mass combat, like atomic warheads going off on the horizon, constantly fighter planes falling out of the sky and thousands upon thousands of soldiers fighting up and down these streets with tanks and artillery. So it is definitely not a pristine city street. I think that's something that we need to take into consideration when we go about constructing these. And something that I want to do is I want to work up a lot of rubble and ruins and stuff. I think that's going to be more thematical for me. So here is all of the, the Wraith Bony color on it now. Now I have made a couple of mistakes, a few overloaded points on the sponge. So you can see a few splodges uh, pretty much under my hand right now is the worst of it, which I will fix later on. I have a way of fixing it, but it was annoying. It's me getting impatient. So please do take your time like a dry brush. Make sure you are removing enough paint off the sponge before you go dabbing it on the, the tray itself and uh, ruining it. A bit of tape from Green Stuff World to uh, mark off the road. And then I can obviously get started on the road. Inky by Darkness is the first color that I will use. And I want to have a nice dark rich blue street. Now, if you are deciding that these are the kind of things you want to pick up and add to your collection, like I said, I'm still probably going to end up getting the last three sets and doing it myself because I'm a sucker. And you want to save yourself a little bit of money. I am now associated with Element Games, so I will leave links down below in the description if you need to buy anything from Games Workshop or any other kind of company, miniatures, stuff like that. And you want to save yourself between 15 and 25% of the total cost and you're in Ingerland please do hit that link it will cost you absolutely nothing else but i will get a nice little kickback from them so every little bit helps i really do like the look of the blue against the cream i think it works really well it gives it more of that kind of industrial look i actually really like the yellow in there as well now that's the tape obviously and it's going to be torn off but there's something about the yellow that could really work but i'm obviously not going to try and invest in that yellow right now maybe if i could go back after all the cities are done and perhaps do some city street markings down the, the roads i'll do them in yellow i think that might really set it off quite nicely as you can see i'm kind of learning my lesson about kind of overdoing it with the cream so i've it is taking a little bit longer to do the road but not an extortionate amount of time i think you could do these things like a box at a time in an evening it could take you kind of two hours maybe three hours so if you find that time all you do is find that that, that block of time three and a bit times i guess to paint up your uh, uh five by four table jumping into stegadon scale green for the next color now this is one of the most subtle differences this color uh this stegadon scale blue green sorry being brought up it doesn't uh, jump off immediately and i guess i didn't want the road to jump off all that much i wanted it to be quite subtle it is the road after all I think there is some um, particular bases also for Titan bases on that. They do have part of the road and part of the ground on their bases as well. So it will be super nice to do those to match in with these tiles, having the, the blue road running down the middle and the cream sidewalk and seeing them on the table, I think will be super, super cool. Another use for these tiles is uh, what I thought of, maybe, maybe I'm an absolute lunatic, but I thought you could make a really nice, interesting Necromunda style board. If you take the roads as corridors and then the cream parts as building outlays or room structures like uh i think that i think that could look really really cool running the necromon the walls down and around those i think it's about the right size you know, like space hulks or all crumbling spaceships or stuff like that i think it's gonna look really cool i may have to try and do that with uh my boarding action walls and stuff maybe they'll fit on nicely and i can have a, a really cool layout Jumping up to the final blue color. Uh, I think this is the bit that makes it um, stand out just a little bit more. Now I haven't cleaned my sponge once. So this sponge is kind of a mixture of all the different colors by the end of this. So uh, and I don't think it really makes much of a difference. The only thing I will say is when I get all of the tiles done to match each other, this is a little trick that I used to do uh, when I was painting the old 
plastic t- uh, tables from uh, Games Workshop is I get to that, that final stage. So whatever the final blue is, whatever the final cream is, I would keep those two colors together. And when I got to the very end and I had all 20 tiles or 24 tiles, if you're going for a six by four all together, I would line them all up and connect them all together. And then I would reapply the last blue on the road and the last cream on thing in between where all the tiles connect so that they blend together a little bit more. Obviously, if you're doing each and every tile as a separate individual piece, one at a time, one at a time, they're not being done next to it. You'll undoubtedly use more or less pressure applying this. And if you just slap them all together at the end, they might not match the way you would want them to. And that's why I think, like I said, you press two tiles together, uh, sponge your way up the middle. And I think you will tidy it up nicely uh, and help them match in together. Removing the tape is, of course, always a very satisfying time in a board. I mean, I don't know about you, but I think that board looks pretty good so far. So we're going to add a little bit more, um, like I said, weathering and dirt. So the first thing I do is I'm going to add watered down Doom Bull Brown. And I'm going to feed this down all the gullies and gutters of this entire board. Like I said, you don't have to be particularly careful at this stage. You're just trying to fill the gutters with brown. It's just dirt and grime. I think lots of the table is kind of too clean. I also took that same Doom Bull Brown watered down so it can flow into kind of nooks and crannies, cracks a little bit better. And I fed that into all the nooks and crannies and cracks. Now, not in between the tiles, I did leave that alone, but where the ground is smashed or where the tiles are cracked, whether that be the road or whether that be the kind of the marbly steps, all of that got fed in with a bit of Doom Bull Brown. I am quite looking forward to doing up some of the buildings. I know there's not a lot of videos out there showing you guys how the building system works. So potentially I will just do a video showing you how to build the buildings, how customizable they are and how crazy you can construct the buildings. Or perhaps I will just do a video on the, the, the box of ruins, just get them painted up really fast for you guys. I'd like to know in the comments which one of those two videos you would like to see first. I probably will end up making both. But um, I do I do not think most people realize how customizable and modular the new city buildings are for Epic. They're actually just stunningly designed. And I would love to show them to you guys. Here's me, as you can see, painting in that uh, thin down Doomble Brown all the cracks. If it overflows a little bit, if it gets smudged here or there, it does not matter. It literally just adds to the effect of it being a down a dirty old street that has been seen war for I don't know how long. It also, once again, helps blend those two things together, both the road and the, the city streets. And yeah, we'll have the same doable bound cracks running through it. And that will help it not look like kind of like two separate pieces, if you know what I mean. They're definitely two parts of the same city street. I also painted this into all of the shores and all the, the drains and all the kind of bits and pieces just to help add to the effect. Otherwise, it would just be a blue and cream table, which would be, I think, kind of dull. Although maybe dull is the name of the game. I quite like the, the kind of dull effect. Obviously, the armies are going to pop off this table quite a lot. The last thing I did was grab a little bit of black air paint and my airbrush. So this is an absolutely optional thing. You do not have to add this in as well. Uh, you can let me know in the comments if you think this added or took away. But I just wanted to add a little bit of scorched marks. You know, explosions and grenades are going to go off all the time. And I wanted to have these little spots of just jet black where it has been burnt or wrecked. I picked specific places on the road that are rubble or craters, but then I just picked a few random bits as well. You know, maybe a guy got, you know, fired off his flame or over there, or maybe the, just once again, darkening it down, giving it that more worn, torn feel of a, of a table. Even when I was doing it, I wasn't hundred percent sure whether it was the right move, but I quite like to follow through on things I start. So you guys can let me know whether or not this was a, a good addition to the board or maybe I should have stopped one stage before. I'm still not 100% sure on it. But I think when you see an entire table done, and obviously the table is still missing the buildings that go in between all these sections. So here is my finished first uh, Civitas Imperialis board from the new Epic game system. A few still images give you an example of what it will look like. Like I said, I'm quite pleased with the final result. If I got 20 or 24 tiles painted up like this, I think I'd be quite happy. And also I'm still curious as to what the multi-use of these things will be. So I will try and get back to you guys with that as well. Okay guys, and there we have it. One of the beautiful new city's tiles painted up and ready to be used in some games of Epic Imperialis. It was a lot of fun to do. I tried a little uh, 
different things while I was doing this. I actually did attempt to start airbrushing one of the tiles and I was gonna show you how to do it via airbrush. And then I was like, no, I don't do airbrushing. I don't do, wanna confuse that with me in the channel. A lot of people don't have airbrushes, so it's not, not gonna be a very helpful video for you guys. But I'm sure 99.9% .9 of people out there in the world can get their hands on a sponge, a couple of paints, and be able to get it painted up nice and pretty. As you see, I did grab an airbrush at the very end, just out of a bit of weathering. That's not a step that you needed. I'm not sure whether I added or detracted from it. I just like the more worn, torn look of the streets. Obviously, this is mass war on a heresy scale, so there's going to be lots of damage to the infrastructure. So I don't like pristine buildings, walls, or anything like that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it has taught you how to get your hands on these city tiles and get them painted up for yourselves quite quickly and effectively. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a like. Ask me any question you want in the comments. I will answer everybody that does make sure you subscribe to the channel get me that 40,000 for christmas or before new year that would be absolutely fantastic you're all heroes i will see you in the next video